Welcome to the Tesla Economist. Please hit the thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. We've all done the back of the napkin math. If Tesla have 40 million cars on the road, and if even 10 million of them are in the robo-taxi network, and they're generating $30,000 a year, then that's $300 billion a year, and a P ratio of 30, and that's $10 trillion valuation. And we can even do some models that say it can take Tesla to $30 trillion or more, or a stock price of $30,000. Outstanding. But is that really going to be the case? Is it really going to be field of dreams? If you build it, they will come. Just because there are potentially that many robo-taxis on the road, are people really going to use them? But how much demand are we talking about here? Okay, sure, robo-taxis are certainly better and cheaper alternatives to Ubers and taxis, perhaps buses and trains even too. But these numbers still aren't that big. Let's first explore what the current demand for robo-taxis is if they replace the current equivalents, and then what it will take to reach the numbers we really want. I thought an idea to do this is we could take a look at some of the major cities and try and calculate their current demand for taxis and Ubers, or ride hailing. Let's start with New York City. Currently, there are 13,500 taxis with medallions affixed. Now, these are the taxis, not the drivers. So each taxi would likely have multiple shifts. This would be close to a one-to-one -one comparison for a rover taxi. Each vehicle should be able to do a similar level of driving for passengers each week. There are also 80,000 registered ride-hailing drivers in the city. Of course, they're only capable of doing one shift, and a robotaxi could do twice as much driving each week. And just because they are registered doesn't mean they're full-time. In other words, let's assume that 40,000 robotaxis could cover the ride-hailing drivers. Therefore, if robotaxis were to replace taxis and ride-hailing, we would only need around 50,000 of them for New York. There are also 5,725 buses in New York, with perhaps around 60 occupancy on each bus. Of course, the bus is not always at full occupancy, but it would be argued that possibly 100,000 robotaxis could replace buses if the buses averaged one third capacity. That would, however, mean that there are 100,000 robotaxis on the road in lieu of 5,000 buses. That would create a lot more traffic. Also, a bus ride is only $2.75 a trip, and a robotaxi will be around 80 cents a mile. Therefore, it will not undercut the price of a bus. The fare for the subway is the same, about $2.75, but it will likely be faster than a robotaxi due to not being stuck in traffic. Also, the time when demand is the highest for transport is in rush hour, and robotaxis would not be able to handle the entire load. Therefore, there will always be the need for buses and subways. Anyway, it comes in at 157 people per robotaxi for replacing taxis and ride hailing. But in Manhattan, a lot of people do walk as it's such a dense city so let's compare it with some other cities. Let's do the same for London. It would seem there are 67,900 taxis with just 45,000 Uber drivers. This is just Uber, so perhaps a total of 60,000 ride-hailing drivers maybe, and we'll half that for the equivalent of robo-taxis. So adding those together, perhaps 100,000 robo-taxis to replace London taxis and ride-hailing. This comes in at 92 people per robo-taxi. San Francisco has 50,000 Uber drivers, but only 1,800 taxi drivers, which seems a bit low. But perhaps with San Francisco being more of a technology hub, then ride-hailing thrives there more. So let's round this up to 60,000 ride-hailing drivers and adjust it to 30,000 robotaxis equivalent, and we get 148 people per robotaxi. I added a few other samples in there too. Bear in mind, these cities might have a lot of tourists as well, compared to perhaps a typical city. Anyway, we have enough data to get a rough idea perhaps within one standard deviation. With this, we can try and estimate the demand for robotaxis. We seem to be seeing one robotaxi between around 300 and 100 people in a city. There will likely be more demand for robotaxis due to lower cost, more convenience, a nicer ride, better entertainment, and not having to be in the car of a stranger. But I would say ride hailing is an inelastic good, as in if the prices dropped, the demand wouldn't increase relatively as much. But there would be plenty of reasons to choose a robotaxi over an Uber and possibly in lieu of other forms of transport too. I'm therefore going to suggest that on average we might have one robotaxi per 100 people. It's likely robotaxis would not be suitable for rural areas, but it seems around three quarters of the US live in urban areas, which leaves about 250 million people in urban areas in America. Then if we divide that by 100, we're at 2.5 million robotaxis in the US. 
This would be the demand if robo-taxis have entirely replaced ride-hailing and taxis. And in addition to that, a higher demand due to the lower cost and better service. But some reports seem to think there will be a lot more robo-taxis on the road than that. In fact, ARC's bull scenario, they claim over 12 million robo-taxis on the road by 2025. How would we reach this kind of number? And presumably significantly much greater by 2030. Well, it would require people to substitute their car for a robo-taxi. Why would people do this? Well, we say how it might be cheaper than owning a car. And sure, in some cities, like New York perhaps, it just might be, where parking is so expensive and inconvenient. And perhaps if you're buying a brand new Tesla, it might be too. But people can still buy second-hand cars at much lower costs. If a robo-taxi charges 80 cents a mile, which is what I estimate a Model 2 taxi to charge, then if the average driver does 13,500 miles a year, then that's over $10,000 a year of robo-taxis. Sure, there is no insurance, fuel, or servicing to pay for, but that's not cheap enough to justify replacing your car. In fact, for $10,000 a year, you can lease a really nice car. You can even buy a reasonably nice used car for just $10,000. Therefore, robo-taxis replacing ownership is not something I can foresee. It only becomes cheaper if you start pooling. If there are four or five of you in the car at a time, and perhaps you don't drive so many miles a year, this is not something suitable for suburban living. But living within a city, perhaps, in countries like India, where they are willing to pull, they get to ride in a more luxurious, safer, air-conditioned modern car for perhaps less than the price of a bus, if they're only commuting perhaps 5,000 miles a year, and only have to pay 15 to 20 cents a mile, then that changes everything. Therefore, it's possible that the biggest market might be for Model 2 robo-taxi pooling in less developed nations. Now, I'm sorry, this was hard to guesstimate the demand of such a service, but there is nearly a population of 1.4 billion in India, and similar to that in China as well. So that's a lot of potential passengers in those two countries alone. If people give up their cars and just use robo-taxis, then there'll be a lot more cars on the road. As the robo-taxis even drive around without passengers half the time, they don't have occupancy all the time. Obviously, you don't just drop someone off at a destination where there's automatically another passenger waiting to be dropped off, where there is another passenger waiting, and so on. So these robo-taxis are driving around unoccupied, which is adding to more traffic on the road. But so are taxi drivers and Uber drivers. And it's possible the robo-taxis could pull over whilst they don't have a fare, or drive to a more popular destination where people want rides, which it will know due to its algorithm. But if passengers are pooling in developed nations, then this is the opposite. Instead of five passengers being in five cars, there are five passengers in one car. It might actually reduce the amount of traffic on roads. Now with this data, let's see if we can value the robotaxi business. We hear that Tesla may have their own robotaxis, but maybe that is for Model 2 in developing nations. And as far as the likes of America are concerned, perhaps it's more the private owner fleet, with just a few of Tesla's own ones to act as a buffer. But Tesla to have their own fleet, it would cost them a fortune. Just for 1 million Model 3s, it would likely cost them around the region of $30 billion. And that's at their cost, and not including the opportunity cost of selling them to customers. So in reality, it's more like $40 billion, which they could build 10 more factories with instead. Therefore, at least for the time being, it will be the owners running the taxis. And if we estimate 2.5 million in the US, Tesla will likely take around $10,000 a year income from each full-time taxi which is $25 billion a year. If we add Europe and other developed nations, it would likely be over $50 billion. If Tesla did own half the taxis themselves, then it'd be closer to $150 billion. And like I said, it's really hard to estimate what the demand in the developing nations might be, but let's say another 10 million. And by that stage, Tesla would be able to fund themselves, as perhaps a Model 2 might cost Tesla less than $20,000 a car to build, meaning it might cost Tesla $200 billion and remember, it doesn't have to be all in one go, and we might be talking closer to 2030. If Tesla did have 100% of this income, then that might equate to $250 billion a year extra gross profit. So maybe within time, there really is a possibility Tesla could reach $300 billion a year in gross profit from robotaxis. And when it is matured at this stage, you probably would give it a P ratio of 30. Therefore, you really could see a $10 trillion valuation on robotaxis. But this might require around 20 million robo-taxis on the road, and it may very well take longer than 2030. Either way, if Tesla are making 20 to 30 million cars a year, then they're not going to stop selling them to consumers. Like some people speculate, there is still enough value in people owning their own cars. 
I guess some people think this might be because FSD might end up costing $100,000 or something ridiculous, but I can't see that happening either. There'll be plenty of people still willing to spend $40,000 on a car that's just theirs, and another ten dollars or $20,000 on FSD too. That's still going to be $30,000 gross profit per sale for Tesla, which is huge. Not to mention what else they thought of upselling by then, perhaps with their app store. But I still think we could be a while off robotaxis yet. 2025 might even be ambitious. I think Tesla have a good chance of reaching a feature complete level 5 autonomy sometime next year. It may take 2 or 3 more years to have regulation approved, and perhaps much longer in other countries. The stock price however, will be reflective of the chances of Tesla being able to achieve robotaxis. FSD will likely be the biggest indicator. Once FSD is achieved, then that alone is likely an extra 20 to 30 billion dollars a year income, and will grow with more cars that are produced. But if you give FSD evaluation alone, with a PE ratio of 100, then that's about $3 trillion itself. And it sounds like we might have some breakthroughs very shortly. Anyway, that's just some of my thoughts at the moment on robotaxis. Thanks for listening. Please hit the thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe.